want to know where the u is max and min, I just look at the g function. Okay, the derivative, if I set the derivative equal to zero, then, uh, then if I set the g equal to zero, then I can know the maximum and minimum of the u function. If I want to know the concavity of the u function, I take the derivative of the g, g double prime, and that gives me uh, knowledge of the concavity of the u. So for example, if I take, if I go over here, and uh, if I look at my g function, remember we plotted the g function, and it looks like this, uh, for r is equal to, uh, uh, for r, the g function looks like this, it goes like that, and then inside of it, it goes uh, something like this, okay? So it's never equal to zero. Now if I take the derivative of the g function, g prime of r, look at what happens. Interesting thing comes out. And you take the derivative of this, you get 4.73 uh, over r, because the derivative of the little r is just 1. Then you take the derivative of that, you have 5.8, uh, 2 times that, and then over r, over uh, r squared. And you, let's say you want to plot the g prime function. So you set this equal to uh, 0, and you can factor out the, the r. So you're left with g prime of r is equal to 3g over rho sub e r, 4.73 bar minus 5.8 r over r, set it equal to 0. So what's the solution to the little r? something interesting is going to come out of this. <clears throat> so you're going to have r over r is going to equal 4.73 over r over 5.8. <clears throat> you get 0.816. Uh-huh, something interesting. So that means the derivative of the g is equal, to point, uh, is equal to zero when it's 0.816. So if we were to graph the derivative of the g, let's make a graph of it here. As a function of r. Now, now we're not interested outside because outside nothing really interesting uh, or unusual happens. So uh, what, or what I'm interested in here is in the center here. So the derivative of the g, when r is equal to 0, it starts out at some positive number. And then when r is equal to, uh, when the ratio of r to big r is 0.816, so somewhere about here, the derivative of g is 0. And when r is equal to big r, uh, it's equal to some negative number. So if the derivative of the g reaches 0 at 0.816 of the radius of the Earth, that means this graph is actually not correct. This graph should look more like this. So it goes up and reaches a certain max and then goes down. So whatever I said in the last video was not completely correct. The gravity of the Earth is the max at 0.816 r. Let's write this here. This is r. This is 0.816 r. Now, how do I know that it's concave down? This is the graph of uh, g. If I wanted to know the concavity of the g, I take the double derivative of the g. And so that's the derivative of this, g double prime. And so that's going to be, of course, a negative, some negative number, right? So it's going to be concave down. So the g reaches its max. So as you go towards the center of the Earth, the gravity keeps increasing because the mass is still concentrated there. And as you go closer, the radius gets smaller. So you go, you get a more concentrated gravity. So you weigh a little heavier there. And I did the math there. If I want to know the g of 0.816. I put it in into the g function, and it gave me a g of 0.816 gave me 10.32. Uh, 
meters per second squared. So you do weigh a little bit more there uh, as you go towards the inside. Okay, now let's go to how does that affect this guy here, the potential energy function. So let's uh, erase this one here. How does that affect here? Well, remember the concavity of the U is determined by the G prime. So the G prime is positive up to 0.816 and negative. So this must be concave up all the way to about here. So if I want to draw it correctly, concave up all the way to about here, 0.816R, and then concave down kind of like this here. And after that, is some other function takes over, the regular function. Okay? So like that. So does the potential energy function have a maximum in there? No. It just changes concavity. Um, I think that's about it. So we showed what the potential energy, how it behaved. We drew a more careful picture of the gravity. And uh, we now have an idea of what the gravity inside of the Earth looks like, what the potential energy inside of the Earth looks like. <clears throat> uh, okay, so now I'm going to 